Good evening, everyone. Welcome to all of you in person. Welcome to everyone who's joining us online. Welcome to those of you who are visiting. And for those who haven't been back in a while, all are welcome to this Christmas Eve service. For those of you who are visiting, all the music is projected on the screen. Responsive prayers are in bold as well on the screen. I am so delighted. This is my first Christmas Eve here at Merging Waters. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa Bayard Weaver, and I'm the student minister here. I have to say it's been an extraordinary year, and I give incredible thanks to this wonderful community for all the welcome and the love and the care that I've experienced. Now I know there's at least one birthday. Wendy? No? Okay, I know my, my niece Courtney. Do we have any other birthdays in the house? Behind me? Right there, we have Dan's birthday. Any other birthdays in the back? What's your name? Oh, Don, I couldn't see you. So Don and Dan, any other birthdays? Well, Don and Dan, you're it. Michael. Uh, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dan and Don. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings on you both. Do we have any anniversaries tonight? Any wedding anniversaries? No anniversaries. So, let us worship. And I will invite Al, if he could, share a couple announcements with us. Over a dozen pages in one minute. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Uh, there are many worthwhile organizations there Details on them will appear, have appeared in the midweek message. Take a look and uh, see where you can lend a hand there. Uh, from Ukrainian relief uh, through to uh, help with Meals on Wheels, they need volunteers, uh, caring for Kenya, and much more. Um, the uh, government has a couple of programs that might be of interest to many of you. Uh, you can take a look at those uh, details as well, a couple of pages of that, dental care and all the rest. Uh, the last service of the year is next week. It's an ecumenical service at Roxbury United, 1030, on the 31st of December. Uh, and then in two weeks, uh, an epiphany service here, uh, January 7th, 1030. Uh, boutique reopens January 11th, and... Um, We'll be screening Bones of Crows after the service on, service on January 14th. Uh, tonight is the deadline for charitable donations to be considered as a contribution for charitable purposes to the church. So you can go home and take care of that as soon as you get there. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Thanks, Al. Here in Merging Waters, we generally take a moment to recognize the traditional lands of the peoples on whose land we gather. Let us join together. We acknowledge that we at Merging Waters live, work, worship, and play on the unceded and unsurrendered lands of the Genyan Gehaga peoples. As we journey towards the birth of Jesus once again, we remember everything this birth means for our whole world and for all people. Hope, peace, love, and joy. May we live our lives moving gently in creation, listening, learning, and striving to be a people of reconciliation. Our opening hymn today is O Come All Ye Faithful, and we'll be doing verses 1 and 3. And don't worry, all the words are on the screen.
Please be seated. Wow, our choir's in fine form tonight. Let us gather our focus. Tonight is an exciting night because the ancient and the distant are brought near to us now in St. Anne de Bellevue and beyond. Tonight, shepherds and angels gather Mary and Joseph, and we gather too because Let's draw closer to the stable now to see that. Let us pray. On this holy night and blessed night, O oh God, we are excited to come into your presence and find that your Holy Spirit is already here, making our spiritual home a cheerful and joyful place. The light of the candles, the warmth of our hearts, and the gifts of Jesus make tonight a night like no other. It is truly a blessed and holy night. Welcome, gracious God. We welcome you and rejoice in your presence. Amen. I'm going to ask Sandy to get ready. So tonight, we await the child who was born, the one we've been expecting. Now, every year we gather to hear this story, now as it was over 2,000 years ago, which brings good news and hope. So let us witness a similar story of expecting and awaiting. This year, I was blessed to welcome a new grandchild into the world. As with the births of my first three wonderful grandchildren, I felt awe and wonderment at the miracle of a new life beginning. When I first held the baby, a mixture of emotions stirred me. Thankfulness for the health of mother and child, pride for my beaming son, who I knew would be a loving, caring parent, and a feeling of happiness and love that filled my heart to bursting. It's amazing how you can feel such warm fuzzies just by holding your newborn grandchild. When my own children were born, I was too busy and frankly exhausted to register all the emotions until later. As a grandparent, you can experience the joy without the pain. As I looked at the precious bundle in my arms, I couldn't help but marvel at how he was a perfect blend of his mother and his father. My hope for him then and now was that he would always experience the love, peace, and joy that I felt at that moment in the hospital. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, you're allowed to clap in the United Church. <laughs> Most of our evening tonight, we'll be walking through some lessons and carols that you're familiar with, with a few unexpected yet awaited surprises. So I'm going to turn it over to Al to lead us in the first passage. First reading is from Isaiah 9, verse 2 and 6 to 7. Long, long before there was a Mary and a Joseph, long, long before there was a Roman Empire that invaded Israel, long, long before there was a census that would bring the infant Jesus to the place of his birth in Bethlehem, the prophet Isaiah foretold that one of King David's descendants would one day be born, bringing peace and a new kind of hope to the people. One day a Messiah would come. One day. And then in Luke uh, 1, verses 26 to 35 and verse 38. At last in the fullness of time, the year arrived for the coming of the Messiah. The story of the angel Gabriel visiting young Mary of Nazareth seems like an unexpected start to the Savior's advent. Mary wasn't famous or rich or well-connected. She wasn't anywhere near the centers of power. She was very young. She wasn't even married yet. And Mary 
And yet Mary was chosen to be the one to bring Jesus into the world. Her agreement with God's plan was a courageous act of faith and hope. May God add understanding to these holy words. And I'll invite Wendy and Michael to share with us a song that I believe is quite familiar. Beautiful. I'm going to ask the Simon Ashdown family to join Kathy Whitehead at the back of the sanctuary as Alan leads us in the next lesson. The birth of the Savior arriving in Bethlehem, Luke uh, 2, verses 1 to 7. The decision of the Roman Empire to, excuse me, yes, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the decision of the Roman Empire to count everyone could not have come at a worse time. Not only did Joseph and Mary have to pay this new tax, they had to travel to Bethlehem where Joseph's people were from to be registered and recorded. 
but Mary was in the very last stages of her pregnancy. It must have been a very difficult journey for her. To make it even worse, when they arrived in Bethlehem, there was no proper shelter for them. They had to stay in an animal barn behind one of the inns. Then the most wonderful thing happened. Here we are together in a world caught between anxiety and hope, celebrating what God has done in Christ. We will never be alone. The baby is born. May our remembering and celebrating change how we live and open our hearts and communities so that all can live together and share in the fullness of life. God always be with us. God with us, Emmanuel. We thank you for love that keeps faith and encourages us to imagine a world where the power of love can loosen the grip on restrictive ways to embrace life. Through Jesus, stir us by the light of your love so that we may return to your way of fullness like you intended us to live for all. Amen. Our next hymn, which one I think you will be familiar with, The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy, and we will be doing verse one. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's time for Pippin. So I'm going to ask all the kids in the hall to come on up. And maybe some not so little kids too. So any young people who want to come up? Now, normally I would sit down, but I don't know if I'm going to get back up today. So <laughs> come grab a seat. Come grab a seat. Do you guys remember the Pippin story? Do you remember the Pippin story? Hey, Maybe? Well, I'll give everyone a summary because not all of you were here. So last time, we heard the beginning part. Now, everyone was in the barn, and they were so excited because Christmas was coming the next day. And what was Christmas, Pippin asked. Pippin's a pig. You remember that part? Yeah? Okay. And you can look at the pictures up there if you want. They couldn't believe that Pippin had no idea what Christmas was. Now, if you remember, Naughty the donkey reminded everyone that the baby's mother won't once rode the donkey all the way to Bethlehem. And Bess the cow had said her great, great, great grandmother gave the manger for the baby's bed. And Curly shared with a ba. I'm doing that a lot tonight, <laughs> that her family gave lamb's fleece to the baby to make the bed soft and cuddly. Now, Kuru the pigeon had said, my very great, great, great grandparents sang him to sleep. And all the whole time, Pippin was asking, where were the pigs that night? But nobody paid attention to Pippin, and that made Pippin very sad. Now, if there were donkeys and cows and sheep, and pigeons, there must have been pigs, right? But once again, nobody was listening to her. She was so sad, so she decided to leave the barn, and she walked outside. And she turned around, just hoping someone would call her back, but no one did. She was really sad. They didn't even notice that she had left. So she decided, and she said, I'm going where pigs matter and Christmas doesn't, and I won't come back never, ever, ever. So she walked out into the cold. It was very cold. Her feet started to hurt, and her tail got really stiff. Brr. But down the road, look, she saw a lady with her baby, and they looked really cold. She didn't have a hat on or gloves and her coat was really, really thin. And she was carrying this baby in her arms. Poor things, Pippin muttered. And just for one little second, Pippin forgot all her troubles. And that's where we left off last time. The woman said, shh, to her little baby. She cooned her and held her. We have so far to go, but maybe we'll find a nice warm barn to rest in. And she shivered. Pippin thought, I know where there's a warm barn. But then she thought to herself, I swore never to go there, but, but this tonight, this is an emergency. So she said to the lady with her nose, follow me. And she nudged the lady all the way down the road until they came to the barn. Maybe the wind had dropped, but all of a sudden, Pippin felt a little bit warmer inside. Now, at the barn door, the little pig pushed ahead inside, and she said, listen to me, all you animals. Don't interrupt, said Naughty. We're making Christmas plans. I don't care, said Pippin. Whatever Christmas was, it was a long, long time ago. I have a baby here right now who needs your help, and she needs a place to sleep. Now Bessie's jaw dropped as she saw the woman holding her baby. And it's Christmas all over again, the woman whispered as she entered the barn. Gently, she laid her baby down in the hay. Can you see the baby in the hay? Yeah? The baby curled up and started sucking her thumb. Bless you, little pig, the mom said. 
it is warm here. And she cuddled up to some hay and she said, and it's safe. My word, they're both asleep already, said Cuckoo the, pi Cuckoo the Pigeon. Then all the animals stared at Pippin. Who is this woman? snapped Curly. Pippin, we can't take in some homeless nobodies, Naughty added. My very great, great best started. Pippin stopped them right there. She said, we'll need some milk. We'll need some warm soft wool. We'll need your old blanket, Naughty. We'll need lots of lullabies. And your very great, great grandparents aren't here, so all of you are going to have to help the baby tonight. Someone said, but that's not a special baby. Of course she is, said Pippin. All babies are special. And Naughty gazed into the small sleeping face and said, you're right, I'd forgotten. Then Pippin looked around. Naughty's warm blanket, Curly's soft wool, Bess's manger and milk. And her tail dropped. She thought, none of these gifts are from me. Ah, oh, pigs have nothing really to give. But thank, thank you, all of you, for being so kind and sharing. And the other animals looked down at the little piglet and said, Oh, Pippin, you are so silly. You gave us our very own Christmas. You gave us a chance to give of ourselves and not brag about our grandparents. Don't you see? That was the best gift of all. It took a little piggy, Naughty laughed, to teach us what Christmas is. The end. <laughs> Did you like the story? Come back in two weeks. <laughs> Thank you. You can go back and see your, your folks. Olivia and Evie, you can hang out there or you can go back and see your mommies. You want to go see your mommies? No? Okay, you can hang there. That's totally fine. <laughs> so I'm going to invite Sandy to get ready. Throughout Advent, we've been journeying with Mary, taking a page from her journal, from her visit with her cousin Elizabeth, her long trek getting to know Joseph, her betrothed, the innkeepers and the shepherds who showed kind hospitality, and today, the birth of her baby. Let's listen in. Well, we've had a long journey, a dramatic birth in a stable, visits from strangers filled with hope, and now here we are, our own little family, with a newborn baby dictating all our activities. He sleeps, we sleep. He cries, we pick him up, feed him, walk him around, sing to him. He opens his eyes for a few brief minutes and we are enthralled. Funny how all that buildup comes down to this, the basic needs of a human being so new and so helpless without others to care for him. The world is crying out for a savior and at this moment, we are changing him out of a damp outfit. But isn't that how it has worked up until now? Look to the unexpected for the answer. Number one, appoint the small town nobody girl to bear the child and her fiance to throw off conventional reactions, step up and be dad. Two, honor an aging cousin with a child of her own, making her a sign and a guide through the early days of uncertainty. Three, Bestow the pack animal with personality and endurance to make the journey bearable. Four, inspire the kind at heart to find an unlikely birthing place and energize those who receive mysterious good news to act on it. God has turned our expectations upside down every time. And in following, we gain a new vision. Look at me. Not just new motherhood has changed me. I've learned to speak my truth, to praise those who uplift, to question authority, and to thank the many people who have helped us get here. Joseph and I gaze at this perfect little being we have named Jesus. A happy ending, for now. 
We know it's just the beginning. Whatever challenges we encountered bringing him into the world, becoming savior to the world will surely involve many more. What do I want to tell him? His eyes are open and I'm sure he's listening. My darling son, we are Jews conquered and ruled by Romans, waiting for a Messiah to restore our kingdom. For years innumerable, we have called ourselves the chosen people of God, descended from Abraham. But is that really the way it works? Does our DNA make us worthy of the incredible generosity that exists because of God? I say that in choosing love, we are chosen, no matter how we identify ourselves, beyond our bloodlines, beyond who our father went to school with, beyond the clothes we wear, beyond two-factor authentication. It's so easy to love you. Vulnerable, needy, cute as a button, smelling of new baby, perfect in our eyes. It can be just as easy to see the light in the eyes of another human being and tell them, you are loved and you are chosen just as you are. Just imagine what kind of a world would we live in today if we all believed we were loved just as we are. Dearest Jesus, let us always choose love and now go to sleep. Truly, you are an angel when you're sleeping. Okay. I'm going to ask Al if he would... Where is he? There he is. And the story continues. The angels sing on high. Luke, uh, verse 2, verses... Uh, Eight to, Luke 2, verses 8 to 14. The very first people to hear the amazing news of the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, were some shepherds out in the hills. The shepherds that night were doing what they always did, taking care of their sheep and trying to keep warm. These were not sophisticated people, nor famous, nor people with a lot of political influence. They were humble, ordinary working people, but God wanted them to hear the news first. It must have been completely overwhelming to have the bright radiance of heaven suddenly burst upon them, but the angels told them not to be afraid because the news they brought was joyous, tremendous, and exciting. May God continue to add his blessing to our understanding of these holy words. Thank you. be seated. Not quite. Forgive me. The neighbors gather. Shepherds head into town. 
Luke 2, verses 15 to 20. Gathering up their courage, the shepherds head into the town for town of, Beth Beth of Bethlehem. They have to look around and ask everyone they meet. But no one has heard a thing about the Messiah being born, not yet. I think I'd be a little surprised if someone approached me around midnight in late December and asked if I knew where the Messiah was. After telling me, they heard the news from an angel. But the shepherds, as humble and rough as they were, had faith and trusted God's messengers. So they kept looking until they found Jesus. We are so blessed to have an amazing choir, and tonight particularly, the choir is made up of many of our family members, in addition to some of our choirs who didn't flee for Christmas uh, celebrations. <laughs> so, Al, and just when you thought you were off the hook, you have one more. work the new life That's Christ's it. gift to all it is indeed a miracle the story of the birth of Jesus the Messiah is an ancient one yet we believe that his coming among us was the start of a new era in human history all through the rest of the Gospels and into the letters of the New Testament the Christian writers of old tried to express their best understanding of the significance of Jesus today we are still exploring and discovering what it all means like Mary and the shepherds, we take comfort in God's message of hope, peace, joy, and love that is bundled up in the tiny baby born in the stable in Bethlehem so long ago. Jesus the Messiah, <clears throat> the Christ, the Savior is born, and that has made all the difference. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the wrestling of all our hearts bring us ever closer to you, O God. Amen. Be 
not afraid. Those were the words that Mary heard from the angel that shaped her to her very core. She was, she was asked to trust fully, not knowing what it would mean for her and how saying yes would change her life completely and the world. So what does that mean for us today? Well, I'm going to backtrack for two seconds. This past year at Merging Waters, we, we journeyed through many themes in community with concepts of collective consciousness. Ubuntu is a Bantu term meaning humanity. It's sometimes translated as I am because we are and I am because you are and how we're all connected. Now, this isn't magic. We see it in creation all around us, in the dance of the starlings. Starlings at Utmore who dance just incredibly. They do this dance every evening without crashing. Not one misturn, not one accident. And the science tells us that they pay attention to their seven closest neighbors on a multi-sensory level. How extraordinary is that? We're also invited to tune in. Remember the old TVs with the antennas? You know, you had to tune in to get the station? Well, we're invited to tune in to the grace and the blessings all around us and to lead with love. Be not afraid. This takes incredible courage to lead with love. And sometimes it takes doing things that are not expected. Be not afraid. I'm going to share with you an insight by Rob Fennell, who's a UCC minister at Grace United in Edmonton. These days, when it's no longer the expected thing to do, those who choose to attend church online or in person do so because somehow, some way, being part of a faith community nourishes us. Perhaps going to church meets a relational need within our family or socially or across generations or even connecting with our ancestors in faith stretching back thousands of years or connecting with the spirit in and around us for some or all of the above. Perhaps attending church helps you engage with sacred mystery in a way that you don't always manage to do throughout the week. And maybe even helps you learn how to engage the mystery throughout the week. Perhaps the church is a place where your curiosity is engaged. Sometimes you learn something new, where your mind and your soul are engaged, or where you offer your gifts and your skills in a way that is deeply fulfilling or where you get to practice praying or different spiritual and meditative practices. Perhaps church meets you to sing with other people and or receive the gift of sacred music. And in doing so, your spirit feels so alive that the cup of life within you is replenished for the week to come. Perhaps you don't even know why you attend, and that's okay, but you attend nonetheless. Whatever it is, I believe God has called us all here, right now, each in our own way. And we've said yes. In fact, this is starting to remind me of how many different people and animals were called to Jesus' birth, each in their own way. Mary, through an encounter with the sacred mystery that scripture identifies as an angel, and her yes to carrying Jesus in her womb. Joseph through an encounter with, excuse me, with sacred mystery in a dream. The innkeeper received a knock on the door. The shepherds and the sheep, because a good shepherd never leaves their sheep behind, they were called through a glorious display of sacred light and song in the night sky. Did you know that sometimes the northern lights, when they're particularly vibrant, they make sounds, they sing. The Magi read those stars and they followed one of them. 
Now, rationally, stories of Christ's birth may not exactly make sense in our understanding of how the world works. And nevertheless, there is something about the stories that draw me in deeply. And I feel that electricity shimmering within my soul. And my heart feels a bit more open. There's a gentle, expectant silence rushing in my ears. I tingle. And in those moments, I feel more connected to the people around me and to creation. I feel that hope-filled certainty of the mystery, the wonder, the peace and hope of Christ's birth. That's for all of us, for all that it was, is, and is to come. I know I have company. <laughs> it's for this world <laughs> that desperately needs love, a world that needs love now, that's born with a cry for a world that needs to feel the responsibility of keeping love safe when it's small, and tending that love and nurturing it and allowing it to grow until the moment it is ready to reach us and teach us and walk with us and heal our spirits and our relationships and expand our vision and tell us and show us that we and all of our neighbors are so beloved that love gives fully of itself to transform the world, no matter the cost. In closing, this very love believes that we too can love and be loved this fully. Be not afraid. John Donahue, a priest and a poet, says that we are each the custodians of our greatest treasure, and that is love. Be not afraid. The story will unfold wherever we are, and Jesus will be, be born. But may God help us notice and tune in. Amen. And with that, let us go tell it on the mountain. This is the time where we offer our offerings and not just financial donations. You can do that online or sign up for PAR, but it's a time to think about what are our gifts and talents that we want to share with this neighborhood and beyond. I'm going to invite the Weber family to come up and share with us. We're so blessed to have so much incredible musical talent in this community.
bells will be ringing for some it's sad news not fun at Christmas to have the blues no one to stay home Once again, choirs will be singing silent night. Christmas carols by candlelight. Please show me it's Christmas. Please come home for Christmas. Friends and relations, send salutations. Sure as a star shine above, but this is Christmas. Yes, Christmas, my So I have a helper, <laughs> minister in training. So this is the part where you hold your hands like this. Can you hold your hands like this? Okay, all right, that you're amazing. So you keep holding your hands like that and we're gonna say a prayer, okay? Let us pray. Bless these gifts we offer, generous God of us all, in sharing our time, our talent, and our treasure. We rejoice in the profound gift of Jesus, whose birth we celebrate this night. And we ask you to add your blessing to what we offer, so that through these gifts, many others may be blessed. And what do we say? Amen. Could you put them up there? Thanks. You can go back to mommy's now. Okay, you can hang with me. Want to come and help me pray? Yeah? Okay. We're going to say another prayer. We're going to pray for all the people who need prayers, okay? Let us pray. Oh God, we welcome you. We welcome you this night, Jesus Christ, born among us once again as a child. The mystery of your birth contains within the mystery of ages and the mystery of God's everlasting love. You do not come among us as one so filled with power that we cannot resist you. 
Rather, you come to us in gentleness, in the flesh, in a child, in weakness and even dependence. You do not overwhelm us, but invite our love with your humble cries. As we're drawn once again to the stable in Bethlehem, we're astonished, along with the shepherds, that you've called out to us with the heavenly chorus of angels to tell us that we are welcome. We are chosen and we are yours. Tonight, we give thanks for these graces and wonders, and we also remember in our prayers tonight all those who need your love and care. We pray for everyone missing home, missing loved ones, missing the companionship they need. We pray for those who are ill or grieving or lost or afraid. We pray for your holy land where Bethlehem still struggles to find peace. And as we joyfully sing out the message of peace and promise, we will not forget those who suffer in Israel, in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Syria, Ukraine, Russia, Myanmar, Sudan, and Azerbaijan, in all the places and all peace, peoples for whom peace is elusive. Grant to us this night, O oh gracious God, an abiding sense of your presence. Bolster our confidence in you, and as you send us forth to be messengers of your love, strengthen our resolve to be agents of your grace. Calm our spirits and make us your own again, for you call us beloved, and we seek to follow you with courage and hope, and we pray this in the name of the Christ child. Amen. I'm going to invite my four helpers to come up with your candles. This is the time in our service where we sing Silent Night. It's traditionally the closing here at Merging Waters, as it was at St. Jenny's, where is, it is my home church. And I'm going to scoot over here. We have some great musicians. And I'm so happy my dad is actually playing guitar. Like, that is incredible. <coughs> you can light your candles, and if you would... And they'll be coming to light the candles in the aisles, and we'll invite you to light each other's candles.
before we move into Silent Night, I want to first thank so many people who made tonight possible, from our ushers, Susan and Kathy, our amazing family and friend choir, the Bryce Weber family, Olivia, my amazing helper, the Simon Ashdown family, Kathy Whitehead, I hope I didn't, Joanne, who helped prepare this, and of course, Michael, amazing Michael. Um, I mentioned I went to St. Jenny's, uh, that was my home church, and I, I learned from an incredible and inspiring man there. And I'm going to share with you what I learned as we begin our song, Silent. Whoops, forgot the clicker. Who's got the clicker? Maybe it's up there? <laughs> Cette voici, c'est noir. Un gros merci. And I'm going to pass it over to Michael. Thank you. Yep. And click once. One more. There we go. And one more. Michael? Gently now, beloved family, go with the blessing of the eternal God. Go with the blessing of the Christ child. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit to share with grace and good cheer this wondrous good news. Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Amen and amen. Merry Christmas, everyone.
unfortunately, we cannot use the hall because we have a group in there. So you're welcome to chat in here, and I will be at the back to chat with anybody who wants to chat.